Good morning. Welcome to this Sunday's morning prayer. The bulletin is found not only in your bell tower email this week, but also in the description of this video. And so you can pause and print as needed, or you can just pull it up on a smart device as we continue so that you have it in front of you. As always, you can open your book of common prayer and follow morning prayer, which begins on page 80. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Let's read together the Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, for by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. And together let's read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. A reading from Acts. Those who have been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs have been done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to the numbers of those who were saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Canticle 8, the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. 
the chariots of Pharaoh and his army have hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, and the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them into safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to one who just judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of all your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Canticle 21, You Are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels and the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious companion, company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you become man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at the right, God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, 
Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he was brought out all, on, all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the proclamation of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold Pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Hasten the coming of your kingdom. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is the first Sunday of the month, and as is our tradition, we offer prayers for birthdays and anniversaries. So first I'll offer our birthday prayer, and I invite, if you have other members of your household, that they can come around you and they can lay a hand on you as we say this prayer. If you would like access to this prayer, it is in our Book of Common Prayer on page 830. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. And for all our May anniversaries, let us pray. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year of holy matrimony. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen your tr their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we take a time for us to offer our prayers, those things that are in our hearts and our minds, our thanksgiving, our intercessions unto God. We raise before you health care workers, people, attack, who, people who are affected by COVID-19, the unemployed and the underemployed, the lonely, those who are afraid or anxious, those in the midst of various recovery or mental illness that are missing their providers right now and their support systems, the Sorrell family, the Stevens family, the Thompson family, Chris, Belinda, Ellen, Walter, Phil, Catherine, Joanne, Melissa, Craig, Lori, Jane, June, Mary, Francis, Edith, and Marilyn. We pray for the departed, Philip Sorrell. We ask you to help him rise in peace, rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I come to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Greek philosopher Heraclitus of Ephesus, writing 500 years before Christ, said that no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it is not the same river and he is not the same man. 
Admittedly, that is pretty heady stuff to start our discussion, but bear with me, for we will not dwell here very long. Heraclitus is both correct, and he is not accounting for the enduring love and presence of God. He had an understanding of an all-powerful being and a belief in God, but he was 500 years before Christ. So let's give him a break. His statement, however, does provide the very reason that we're able to read the Bible again for the first time, that we find something new each time we read a passage. The message has always been there, but when we read a passage again, we're different, and the circumstances that surround us are different. No man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river, and he's not the same man. The river and the man change. God's enduring presence and love does not change or falter. The words to, this, to Psalm 23 are the same each time we read them. Yet each time we read them, they differ. The same is true when we read stories of the Good Shepherd. The stories don't change. Our reading of them does. We read them again for the first time. We see them anew in a different light with each reading. So I want to share with you five images, something that without the blessing of our online worship would not have been practical. You may even wish to pause the video focusing on each of the images rather than my own words. These images are all by the same painter and are all of the same subject. These images are all very different. The painter is Henry Osawa Tanner, born in Pittsburgh to an escaped slave mother and a father who was a bishop in the AME church. He was raised primarily in Philadelphia. He left Philadelphia to escape the racism of the late 1800s and lived in Paris until his death. In 1896, five years after arriving in Paris, Tanner wrote to his parents that, I have made up my mind to serve him, God, more faithfully. The focus of his paintings became God and scenes and images from the Bible. He was a realist painter with a strong sense of light and often combined detailed de depictions of a scene with broad brush strokes that evoke emotion and presence. The Good Shepherd is a subject that Tanner returned to often. His son said that he believed that God needs us to help fight with him against evil and we need God to guide us. Tanner's work benefited from a trip to the Middle East where he experienced the culture and the environment of the biblical scenes. And following this trip, his work took on a more mysterious and spiritual nature. The five paintings that I wish to share were painted from 1903 to 1930 and represent a range of interpretations of the Good Shepherd. They all share the same title. The first image shows a shepherd framed between two mature trees, walking in the dark shadows of the night. The deep roots of these trees form a bond between ancient times and our times of trepidation. The light of the moon, or the light of God, is hidden in clouds behind the trees, clouds of doubt. 
This image of the Good Shepherd calls for our perseverance in faith through the darkness. So the second image, painted 11 years later, shows a scene flooded with light. And this shepherd is carrying a lamb. In viewing this piece, we're almost blinded by the brightness of the light. This is in sharp contrast to the hidden moonlight of the previous work. It would have been the practice in biblical times for a shepherd to walk behind his flock, watching over them and guiding them forward. The sun at this shepherd's back seems to suggest that God, as depicted in the light, is walking behind God's flock guiding us forward. So this third image depicts the Good Shepherd, as so many other paintings and icons have done. In this image, the shepherd carries a single sheep on his shoulders, walking alone. And perhaps this is that one lost sheep. Again, in this image, the light is strong and almost blinding. This image also reveals the harshness of the land where the shepherd keeps his flock. The final two images were painted following the death of Tanner's wife. This next image shows what appears to be a setting sun that's just above the horizon. In this image, the shepherd carries a lamb while the flock follows closely behind. The dark foreground and shadows suggesting the setting sun and the darkness that awaits our next steps. And then in the final image, there's no distinct source of light, sun or moon, just a wash of light, the ever-present light of God. In this image, the shepherd and the flock are diminished. Appearing in the lower right corner, they blend into the surroundings and become a small part of a very large and significant landscape. This landscape is the only identified location in this series. It's the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. The landscape's harsh and perilous, as if to say, without the Good Shepherd, you risk a misstep that leads to death. Throughout his exploration of the theme of the Good Shepherd, Tanner expresses a faith in divine care and the perseverance of faith through the darkness. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You've anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The six verses of the 23rd Psalm speak clearly of the divine care that Tanner showed in his interpretations of the Good Shepherd. These six verses speak of the perseverance of faith that will get us through the darkness. One line, 
though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, frames the picture. Every other line speaks to God's enduring presence and love. We begin with noting that God is my shepherd. We can each proclaim to have a personal shepherd watching over us. A shepherd who assures that we abide in verdant pastures with an abundance of life-giving water. A shepherd who assures that we're protected from evil. A shepherd who provides for us with abundance. This is an enduring relationship. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We have a place to call home. As we shelter in the safety of our homes, we also abide in God's presence forever. It's easy in the midst of all that occurs in our lives to forget this. It's easy to think that we're alone in our trials and to forget that we never walk alone. Jesus knew this about us and for that reason we find these are the final words of the Gospel of St. Matthew. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Brother Bartali of the Society of St. John the Evangelist said it this way. One day, Perhaps those seeking answers from Jesus will remember what has always been true. That they are already being guided by the Good Shepherd. That they are already dwelling in the pasture we call God's kingdom. God's truth is not so much hidden or difficult to attain but merely forgotten. All we need to do is remember. All we need to do is remember. Amen.